Truth can be stranger than fiction. What's up, players? I just wanted to come on here and uh, talk to you about some things that I've seen uh, lately that are quite disturbing. Even among the uh, entertainment community. Even though we just had a big labor strike. And... Uh, some uh, massive concessions and agreements made throughout the whole thing. Keep in mind, I am not a uh, WGA or sag after member, but I do appreciate their efforts. And uh, I wanted to come on here and talk about what I've been seeing on Twitter and YouTube lately. Because I did make one kind of response to this already on TikTok. And uh, I really want to plead with any big YouTuber out there with a much larger audience than me. If you are a big YouTuber with like 10,000 or 100,000 more subscribers. Or you live in Japan and know how to get more other Japanese to watch this video. Please do so because what I have to say is bigger than any pro-woke or anti-woke propaganda. Also, uh, watch this video in its entirety because if you care about any of the issues that I bring up at any point in this video, I am uh, ready to make myself available to uh, come on to uh, your YouTube channel your uh, streaming channel, your vlog, anywhere where you have a huge platform and talk to you about any of this as much as you like, I'd be more than happy to make time for you. And what the message is about is accessibility. When Hollywood and the rest of the world began to distribute their content around the world, they had to get past language barriers that are naturally going to exist in 2024. Those language barriers still exist because the languages and content was produced <laughs> is, is not always going to be in their first language. But that was not always the case. Back in 1931 in America, from coast to coast during the Great Depression, this came to theaters. I am Dracula. Oh, it's, it's really good to see you. I don't know what happened to the driver and my luggage and, well, and with all this, I, I thought I was in the wrong place. But look at what Spanish-speaking countries got here. Soy Dracula. No podía usted ser más oportuno. No sé lo que pasaría con el cochero, con mi equipaje, con todas esas cosas. Creí que me había equivocado de casa. Explanation, please. There were a lot of theaters in, in different parts of the world that were still not equipped with uh, sound equipment for the audiences to hear the movie. And as a result, uh, sound films like Dracula were released in silent versions so that, so that those audiences, those theaters that weren't equipped with sound equipment could actually see the film. That was another way of getting over language barriers in the early talking era. The adoption of English-speaking talkies posed a real problem for the Latin American markets, which wanted to hear talking films spoken in their own language. Dubbing was still not an efficient and known commodity, and those studios that had the biggest interest in that market turned to doing secondary productions of their major films in Spanish versions for that market. Dracula was one of these pictures. The message I'm trying to convey is that dubs for anime and all other foreign films and content, television, 
should not be treated as some sort of simple art piece made to complement the original, but as an accessibility tool, just like you would with closed captions for the hearing impaired and descriptive audio for the blind and visually impaired. Because the impairment here is quite simple. That one is not a fast reader. You've seen this meme countless times in relation to this matter. Now, let's look at this meme one more time so you'll know what I'm talking about. Now, I want you to look at this meme right here that you probably haven't seen. Look at this one and let it sink in. Back in 2004, I myself, along with countless many others in America and around the world, went to go see Mel Gibson's The Passion of the Christ. Now, next to Hardcore Henry, it was the most difficult and nauseating experience in a movie theater <laughs> I ever had. And not because it was bloody and gruesome and gory. And uh, let's face it, the crucifixion is basically that. <laughs> bloody and gory, torture. You're basically being tortured alive. <laughs> but it wasn't because of any of that. It's because the movie was not in English, but in Arabic, Latin, and Hebrew, the three most common language in ancient Judea at the time this takes place. Not a bad move for making a film about the life and times of uh, Jesus. Knowing much as I do, being raised a Christian, the movie was hard to follow. But not too many people know Latin, and there are plenty out there in the world who speak Hebrew and Arabic, but it's not always their first language. So back in 2015, when I saw this new Blu-ray on the shelf, I saw that it included an English dub. I bought it because regardless of it being controversial and such, because of Mel Gibson's belief that the Jews are responsible for the death of Jesus, I love the movie. I am one of those people in the world who is not a fast reader. And you have to be a fast reader if you're going to watch a film in subtitles and enjoy it, especially if you don't speak the original language. I am constantly pausing and rewinding everything I watch because I watch something I don't have the option to hear it in English. So, to me, dubbing is a form of accessibility, not just an art form. Yes, dubbing is an art form. It's made to complement the original that we have right here. The originals are all here. All the Japanese language tracks are included on all of these, except for Speed Racer for reasons I don't understand. Now, Sailor Moon and other classic anime was heavily edited, mainly not just because of cultural differences and limited airtime, but to suit their style of storytelling. 
They wanted the final product to feel as if it was made for U.S. television. Make this feel like it came from the same animation studio that made Inspector Gadget and all of other Studio Diggs classics. There you go. What they essentially produced changed the context in almost every circumstance. It wasn't until 2014, until Viz Media got a hold of this and did a faithful and uncut dub. Not just Sailor Moon. Dragon Ball Z had some dumb problem with the depiction of death so that everyone got sent to another dimension. In that case, the context was so far removed from the original, but the subject of resurrection also played a part in the series just as equally. Yu-Gi-Oh! One Piece, Naruto, all had dubs that changed the context. The basic context of the original, just to make it for children's television, sometimes trying to sell it to an audience much younger than what the original filmmakers originally intended. Let's face it, a lot of this was made for older audiences. New World Pictures in the words of Toy Story director John Lasseter, butchered, that's right, butchered Nausicaa, and uh, Hayao Miyazaki wouldn't allow another one of his films or any other Studio Ghibli film to have another chance to be dubbed for almost several years and it wasn't until 1997 for Princess Mononoke. And that led to the rest of Studio Ghibli's back catalog. One by one, getting proper, uncut English dubs. Here's a shock for Okay, here's a shock for you. Anime studios are not dumb. They know what the job description of a localizer is. According to Raise.me, it is as followed. Localizers adapt text and graphics used in a product for services from one language to another language. A task known as localization. Localization specialists work to make it appear as though the product originated in the country where it is sold. Well, that last part is not always true. You can't completely erase the fact that a product is labeled made in Japan. Some changes are acceptable, but when you change full sentences, like when you are serving the general purpose of the dub and the part of accessibility and who don't speak the language, you're trying to part your beliefs. Say if, let's look at ghost stories, for example. In the scene where this girl says, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? The boy replies, no, I'm Jewish. Have you accepted Jesus as your personal savior? No, I'm Jewish. <laughs> that could be offensive to anyone, especially uh, Jews. They're fighting a war right now, but uh, there's plenty of them here. With that being said, how have the localizers reacted? Well, you might be surprised. Rather than engage with the critics, like any other sensible filmmaker in the entertainment industry, we've gotten this. Let's look at how one voice actress and scriptwriter talked about this issue several years ago. I struggle with power and I appreciate it. 
appreciate it. Well, uh, I'm kind of scared to ask this question now because I don't want to bring them room. Ask away. So Just ask away. Let's be quiet. I'm ready to bring down the room. Let's do it. We need a spotlight. Um, so, Funimation has come under, let's just call it criticism oh, for how they choose to adapt their scripts uh, for with a couple of shows. Hate. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, um, and a lot of that I feel is directed at you unfairly. Thank and, you. Uh, <laughs> so, how, how would you like to respond to that kind of criticism? To the criticism? Like, I have a vagina. Deal with it. <laughs> huh? Like, it's honestly. <gasps> Wow, aren't we a feisty one today? <laughs> Did the volcano just blow? Iceland, come in Iceland. Did she really say that? Al, did she really say that? Man, let's get out of here. She has a vagina. Shocking, I know. <laughs> but... God dang, man. Might as well watch the rest of the video. That's the truth. I am a woman. I am a funny woman. We are all talented, funny, powerful women. We are out here. It's going to happen. Deal with it. I'm sorry you're not getting laid. It's not about you. Move on. Getting laid? That's not She's probably the kind of person who's getting laid in her sleep if she has the gall to say something like that. <laughs> who's not getting laid? All right. You're saying he's not getting laid? <laughs> you're saying this guy right here is not getting laid? You don't know his relationship status? You don't know his marital status? What if his son is watching this? His daughter? He is standing up there talking to someone he admires and this is what's happening. She is literally talking down to him like he is nothing, like he is less than human. She was asked this point blank about rewriting the translation of the original Japanese and some of the dubs she's worked on and her response is to say that she has a vagina. And while we're at it, let's ask if that was a guy up there saying that he had a penis and two testicles. What the fuck? Uh, let's finish the rest of this. <laughs> thank you. Anybody else have anything to add? I think no? you nailed it. Okay, great. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you for thank allowing you. me to say that. Yeah, thank you. That's all he could say. Uh, you get a lot of hate online. Oh my god, it's ridiculous. I'm and, sorry. I but also, like, like, she just told me that happened. Oh, yeah, we'll talk about it later. But here's my feeling. Anytime I make, like, if I'm making misogynists, and Nazis angry, then I'm doing all right. <laughs> we don't, I mean, honestly, 
we don't want them associated with our fandom. They are not representative of us, and they will stand out and try to own this fandom. And I'm like, you don't realize these are amazing people with lots of backgrounds, well, with lots of different cultures, and, and just an amazing array of, of strength and power within them, and you do not represent the people I know. So just, I feel strongly about it. <laughs> okay. That is insane. What did she say here? You get a lot of hate online. Oh my god, it's ridiculous. I'm and, sorry, but I also like that. she just told me that happened. Oh yeah, we'll talk about it later. But here's my feeling: anytime I make like, if I'm making misogynists and Nazis angry, then I'm doing all right. <laughs> I'll tell you who you made angry. His wife! You made his wife angry! Okay, I know the video looks, uh, looks old and fuzzy. I'm gonna try to enhance it in, in post. But, uh, does, is there anyone in that crowd to you who obviously looks like a Nazi? Honestly, you guys? Any of you here, does anyone out there in that crowd look like a Nazi to you? Well. Jay? Uh, did anyone in that crowd to you look like a Nazi? Uh, uh, guys, we lost Jay. Man. Hope he's all right. Let's drink my electrolytes. Well, well. If you think your audience consists of Nazis and misogynists, then you don't know your audience. Because if you don't see them waving Confederate flags and, uh, and all that, let's face it. You used to saw they see that a lot at NASCAR. You would see Confederate flags, Southern flags. You would know that they were that they were rebels. That whole thing in general is downright despicable, unprofessional, unacceptable, appalling, and reprehensible behavior. Also, I'd like to add that uh, I believe that the one thing that me and uh, Jamie Marcy in particular do have in common is that we are both uh, caring and loving people and we're really not that angry at the world. If, let's face it, if I spent all my time watching MSNBC, CNN, or Fox News and just being angry at the world, I wouldn't have time for anything else. But I would like to say that this is an isolated incident, but it's not. Kathleen Kennedy demanded that Gina Carano and everyone else unfollow certain people and organizations and unlike certain posts on social media. And let's not forget that Johnny Depp is a victim of domestic violence and yet he was made to suffer by the Hollywood industry. He got fired from everything. Everyone thought that he was the perpetrator and yet it was proven otherwise in a court of law and that his ex-wife Amber Turd was made to pay out a lot. And I do mean a lot. That's what goes on domestically here. And it may be shocking, but that is how the game is played. You say you don't want Nazis and misogynists in your fan base. You don't get to choose your fan base. You don't get to choose who likes your content. And look at this right here. These images. This is not what you think of when you think of misogynists and Nazis. 
This is what usually comes to mind to people. See, Andrew Tate and his dangerous messages. Hitler giving his big speeches. The Holocaust. And uh, this picture in particular, which Gina Carano famously shared on Instagram, of the Liv Prodom. <laughs> Hitler was a big fan of Beethoven, and he incorporated Beethoven's music a lot in Nazi marches and parades. The fans out there can be many things. They range from young and old, male to female, multiple ethnic and racial backgrounds. They come from different walks of life. Some are rich, some are poor. Some are rich. Some just come home every day from a hard day's work. They want to sit down and relax from being yelled at from the boss. Like, imagine if Kathleen Kennedy is your boss. You definitely want to sit down and take your mind off of things. And when it comes to your entertainment, you don't really want to hear things that you would hear from your boss. You probably want to watch something simple, like uh, Sailor Moon. You might want to watch a classic like Dracula, Frankenstein, Invisible Man, The Wolfman. <laughs> well, you might want to binge all the Yurisei Yatsura movies. Or you might want to uh, reconnect with your childhood. Or, uh, you just want to escape it all. Or, probably you wish you were the one saving humanity. Or, uh, maybe you wish you were that kid saving the world. Or, maybe you might want to really try to escape and be someone else for a change. Or <laughs> maybe you just want to race to uh, another place in time or uh, or maybe you just want to fly away. Or uh, you might want to fly further away and get away from everything. Maybe you just want to go through a sea of uh, imagination. Because all you need is love. 
Like if every single foreign film out there, those, not in English, but some are. Yeah. We know. <laughs> well, in any place and time and space where we have to deal with people calling us Nazis and misogynists when we're not, that is a dangerous world to live in, I swear. You don't want your children to live in a world where someone, anyone, believes it's okay to call them Nazis or misogynists when they're not. You know, your children are accepting just like you are, and they're tolerant. And they're not prejudiced. They don't have any prejudice bone in their bodies. They're not Nazis. They're not skinheads. They're not Crips. They're not Bloods. They're not anything else. They are human beings accepting of the world. Even when, the, when there are those who are not accepting of them. And in closing, I just want to say that it all started as a way to make media accessible to people who didn't speak the language and not have to spend years, years of learning a new language. The amount of Spanish one learns in high school is not enough to enjoy the Spanish version of Dracula. Look, I also want to add that it doesn't matter if it's made in Japan or made in America. Each country has its own social issues that find their way into our pop culture, into our entertainment, and uh, what you gonna do? We do want our entertainment to be as apolitical as possible and still convey a message of diversity, equity, and inclusion that is really coming across both in front of the camera and behind the camera whenever possible. And uh, when it comes to dubbing, the real art behind a dub is not AI. AI is best reserved for a consumer end product for something that doesn't even have a dub, just only the original language. And uh, when the real, the real art form is when the actor behind that microphone can deliver his or her line with finesse and sincerity and have it come across on the screen and perfectly complement the uh, original. This December, I turned 40 years old. And if I live another 40 years, and during that time, a person like you and me may somehow begin to meet the standard definition of a Nazi or a misogynist, then society is in trouble. I just had to say that. Okay, after I've stopped and uh, started to put this together, I realized that uh, this is the one, the only one in my collection that uh, does not have an English dub. So, uh, Jamie, Jamie Marcy, if you're watching this, Grisaya, Seasons 1 and 2 and its OVA 
have yet to receive an English dub. So uh, I think that is a good test for you to uh, prove yourself that you can be just a simple localizer and a dub actress and not try to add too much personal flair. This should be preserved as it is. And if you believe so, Jamie, you should petition really hard for this. Because I would really love to see an English dub for this happen. That's the end of my script. So, I really hope that fans really get a better deal here because the actors they got a better deal AI is not going to take all their jobs I can't say the same thing about people who work on uh, foreign films and uh, also if you want to donate to me uh, help me uh Make more uh, YouTube content. I'll leave uh, information in the description below. I want to thank you all for uh, watching this. And, uh, arigato gozaimasu for anyone in Japan who uh, took the time to uh, watch this, watch this whole thing. I really thank you. And I honestly hope that what I've said here is going to reach as many people as possible. And, uh, later. Uh, uh, all right, I'm all right. Uh.